Good afternoon, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm going to uh, get us in here. I need everybody who's joining us tonight online. If y'all will, I need you to um, I need you to share the live, if you will. Uh, help us tonight. Help us tonight get out the invitation to all of our people that we are live tonight for our Bible study. And if God's will, we're going to end our Bible study tonight, and we're going to begin to move over into another lesson. But tonight, we need everybody who will go with us back to Ezekiel chapter number 37. That's what we're going to finish up tonight. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Hey, everybody who's joining us tonight, uh, make sure you speak to me. It is not polite to come online and not speak to the person talking to you. Amen. <laughs> I jokingly say that, but I do wish that everybody would speak. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm trying to get to this live so that I can speak to you personally. Uh, I say um, good evening to s deacons and mother um, David and Mary Morris. I say also uh, good afternoon and good evening to uh, Mr. Roland Pullen Sr., the first. Oh, we'll be the first, right? I got it right. Yes. Yes. Got it right. Uh, we want y'all to come on in tonight. We also say good evening to um, Sister Carter. We thank God for her as well. Sister Stewart, how are you tonight? Sister Fennell, how are you tonight? Hey, don't y'all be mean. Make sure y'all speak, too. How you doing, Sister Burt? Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? <laughs> I said my good evening in the Your comments. Roland already put his good evening in the comments, so. I was still sharing. I was still sharing. Oh, you were still sharing. Sharing is caring. Thank you, Minister Tony, for sharing. Uh, as you say, if you care. <laughs> if you care. Ezekiel chapter number 37 tonight, that's where we're going tonight. Uh, we're still dealing with the fact that God um, offers life uh, to his people. God offers life to his people. And tonight, um, we're going to try, we're going to try our best to uh, move swiftly through our introduction for those who may not have been with us in the last few weeks and then we're going to try to move swiftly into our lesson uh, that we may be able to finish it on tonight. And so um, before we start, let me not uh, get too ahead of myself. I'm going to ask Minister Pullen if he would tonight to give us an opening prayer. Um, and then I'll go ahead and put this out there. Uh, Minister Tony, you prepare to close us out tonight. Amen. Dear merciful, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us here this evening safely. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together again. And thank you, Lord, for this place that you've provided for us where we can study and learn about you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the pastor here who uh, is so willing to share his knowledge. Thank you, Lord, for the members who came out to uh, to to study with us tonight. And thank you, Lord, for those that, that have tuned in online. I pray to Lord God there will be larger gatherings of, of all both online and in person, both on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday evenings for, for Bible study and in any event that happens to come this way. But in the meantime, Lord, we, we want to give you all the honor and glory and the praise, Lord, for all that you do for us each and every day, Lord. You wake us up in our right mind and you put us to sleep at the end of the day, Lord. And then you turn around and wake us up again the next morning. So thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Lord. At this time, Lord, we pray that something will be said and done during this time of study that pleases you. And in your name we do pray and give you all the honor, glory, and praise. Amen. All right. Let's dive in. So tonight, we know where we are. Ezekiel, prophet of God, preacher man. He is commissioned by God as he has been all of this book. And the book I'm referring to is the book of Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel is the highlight 
of this prophet's life. This book shows his journey and his relationship with the God that he serves. Um, In all of the chapters, we have a common theme, and we know that the common theme is that God has called Ezekiel. Ezekiel always points to his job and assignment to and with God, and he always points to the fact that he's not carrying his own message. Uh, That's always the point that we need to drive home in any one of our lessons is that the truth of this lesson and the truth of our lives is that while we all have been commissioned to go ye therefore, we are commissioned to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I was talking to one of uh, our own on a couple of weeks ago, I was telling them uh, how it's time, uh, Mother Morris, that we become so serious about um, God's message and his ministry that we ought to have the cockiness. You know how you used to have, uh, Minister Tony, I don't know if you fought in school. I did a few times. So uh, <laughs> that you know how it would be when you would be hyping yourself up and you would be kind of talking to yourself, you know, and you would almost be telling your opponent in your mind, oh, you're going to get this. You, you, mm-hmm. You're, you're going to get this. Like, right. you, you, you know, we, we're going we're finna to handle this. It's time that we get that serious about God's message, and every opportunity we have, we approach that opportunity saying, you're going to get this work. You're mm-hmm. going to get this message. Like, and, and the reason I say this is because we've been so lax. We follow the idea that as you go, if they don't receive you, you dust your, uh, shake the dust off your feet and you keep going. But the idea is that you shake the dust off your feet and you keep moving from that place, but you don't stop the message of the gospel. You don't stop the message of the cross. It doesn't matter where you are. You are to preach and to preach what it is that God gives you. Brings us to uh, the point in our lesson tonight that I really want to get past is that it doesn't matter where you are. If God calls you, you must preach. That's just the simplicity of the gospel. That's the simplicity of this this lesson. Um, In a valley, in a a dead place, in a dark place, in a depressing place, in a low place, God still says, preach. Um, Doesn't matter how it feels, doesn't matter how it looks. We know in chapter 3, and we'll talk about this, he's been rejected. We know that he's had issues with having to have the confidence to walk up to the king and tell the king you're not as perfect as you used to be. Um, We know that Ezekiel has gone through a lot, and he has carried the message of his father. He does this, and he gets to this valley. We see the potential of the valley. God is asking him, can these bones live? These bones are dry, they're dead, and they represent the house of Israel. They're dry, they're dead, and we represent the house of Israel. So as Ezekiel is talking, as Ezekiel is having a conversation with God and they're having a conversation about these bones, I need us to change our mind tonight. Don't look at these bones as being the house of Israel. I need you to look at the conversation that God is having with Ezekiel concerning you, concerning me. We are the bones. And if we don't receive what God has for us to receive, which is the word of God, then we will be dead, dry, and many in a valley. Why? Because we are the body of Christ. And while the body of Christ, and I think you've alluded to this many before, uh, Minister Pullen, that the whole Bible, most oftentimes he always referred to us, he refers to us as the body. He refers to us as the body because he's the head. And if we, the body, who are the bones, are dead, then that means that the gospel becomes of none effect. Didn't say that the gospel wasn't still true. But the gospel needs a vehicle by which it's carried. And if the bones that are supposed to carry it are dead, then that means that the gospel doesn't reach the people. 
what happens when the gospel doesn't reach the people. And so he said, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. L Lord, you asking me, and, and I'm only here to be used by you. Here then in verse number 7 and 8, we see the presentation. Ezekiel affirms that he prophesied at he, as he had been commanded. And while he was prophesying, he heard a noise. This noise were the bones starting to receive what has been said by the preacher. I need to stop real quickly, real quickly, and say that when the man of God is preaching the message of God, it is important that we, the people of God, react as one who has received the message. The, the key word here is noise. The key word here is sound. That when God has spoken to you and when his word has become revealed to a place where you can understand it, you ought to respond with the noise. We talked about this before. We call it praise. We call it worship. You shouldn't, God should not have to do anything first for you to do any praising or any worshiping. But as he does, we ought to respond with the noise. And if we don't respond with the noise, I think it's safe to say that either the word wasn't spoken or we didn't receive said spoken word. What you got, Mr. Tony? Um, um, as you were saying that when the word goes forth, there should it should invoke a sound or a response. Mm -hmm. But what we must understand about the word, or if we could just break it down a little bit further, the truth deserves a sound All right. or a response. Okay. Because um, uh, as we all know, we, we will, um, good news in the African-American household of yesteryear and today oftentimes does not move as fast as it does uh, with bad news. This is true. <laughs> this is true. All right, I'm trying to be politically correct here. This is true. Um, and so oftentimes we'll hear something bad. We'll know everything bad. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me let me politically correct myself. We will gossip a whole lot faster than we will tell the truth. That's it. All right. That's it. And and sidebar real quick. All uh, thoughts and opinions expressed by Minister Tony are that alone of Minister Tony. And please do not reflect that of Antioch Baptist Church. <laughs> All right. Uh, back to this. OK, so uh, uh, we will often push bad news faster than we will good news. And you will, you will have to search high and low to find anything good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when it is as bad, mm -hmm. you know about it before the bad act get done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know how many times, I hope my granny ain't watching, how many times I done did something bad. The news got home before I got home. And before the streetlights came And on. before I got home, <laughs> this neighbor knew about it. That neighbor whooped me for it. That other neighbor helped hold me down while that other neighbor <laughs> whooped me. And then when I got, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. So, so, so the fact of it is, is, is if, if you've been uh, uh, taken on the call of Christ, if you've called yourself to be Christian, then therefore it should be your duty. It should be your joy. It should be your... Uh, uh, pride mm -hmm. to carry out the good news of Christ and therefore make a sound behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm done. I'm, I'm so far. Well, sidebar, since you said that Psalms 100, this is why, this is my favorite scripture. This is why it says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It says you got to come in with something. You can't come in expecting for the people to move you to that place. You have to come in with something. And that, 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 particular text is is very personal it's not personal just to me but it was personal to the psalmist david it's personal to me and it should be personal to everybody who reads it because when you look at the fact that you're supposed to enter into his gates with thanksgiving let's not even look at the church you're supposed to enter into his presence being thankful 
Anytime you are in his presence, you ought to come in with a praise and thanksgiving. Um, why? It simply says in the next few verses, uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his, his courts be pra- with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name for. <laughs> that, that's the turn part there. You, you do all of this because the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Here's the funny thing. It didn't even say in that text, Antioch, that you praise um, because he's done something for you. The text says, so Jasmine, you praise just because, because he's good. <laughs> and so the point that we're making tonight is Ezekiel is in the valley. He's preaching to the dry bones. He's telling the dry bones to hear the word of God. They hear, and now they make a sound. Let me back up. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit that. is saying to the churches. Everybody ain't got an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying, which is why everybody cannot praise the way they should because they ain't hearing the Word of God. They're hearing words. Y'all hear me? Because they attach the words to the person preaching. They hear the person. But they also attach the person preaching and the words they're saying to the acts that the person lived by behind closed doors. Y'all don't want me to get real tonight, so let me, let me. <laughs> push them, <laughs> push them, um, push them. Keep on going. Keep they on going. won't hear God because they're blinded by the person. And we are aware that God never calls a perfect person to tell the truth of the gospel. He, tell, he calls a person that has allowed the gospel to deal with them in such a way that they know that the truth of the gospel is because of what they've experienced. We're going to talk about that it, right now. Ezekiel is in verse number 37 telling God, you know that they can live. You know what, what you're asking me. He's telling him this is the birth because over in chapter 3 and 4, Ezekiel has a problem where he's rejected by the people and he's mad. He's upset. He has, God literally has to deal with Ezekiel in chapter number three. And it brings Ezekiel to a point where he gets to chapter number seven and he's preaching with confidence to the valley of dry bones because he knows that what he's preaching is true. Why? Because he keeps telling us that the word of the Lord came to me. He keeps telling us that the spirit of the Lord carried me out. He keeps telling us that the Lord showed him. Everything that Ezekiel says is, listen, while I was minding my own business, <laughs> the Lord showed me, carried me, spoke to me. I wasn't asking him. I didn't, I, I didn't even, matter of fact, um, I didn't ask him for the platform, didn't ask him for the title, didn't ask him for the position. He saw something in me, yeah. called me, and told me while in the valley, and I'm still talking about this, while it may seem I might be talking to myself, he told me in the valley, preach, and if they hear, they should make a sound. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be politically correct, and we'll move on. I told Antioch this a long time ago, no longer do I come in and preach for anybody to say amen anymore because I know that what I'm saying is what God told me to say. And if they hear, they'll make a sound. I shouldn't have to ask for the sound if they hear. It's almost like going back to just being simple as the old preacher would say if he would get on this peruse down this memory lane about how good God's been, he'd simply tell you that you ought to praise him because he woke you up. You ought to praise him because he started you on your way. These are reasons. We ought to praise him because he, you went to your refrigerator and you had food in there. You ought to praise him because you didn't have money in your pocket but had gas in your tank. You ought to, all of this stuff should be reason why we praise him, and these are reasons why many of us take God for granted. And we can't praise him, Mother Morris, because we don't hear him talking, because we see his movements, and we think that we, he owes it to us. Wow. Yes, ma'am. I wish we had a microphone real quick. Real quick. Jump one back there. Get this one. Here we want folks online to hear what you got to say, Sir Bertha. I know, I know we can hear you in here. You okay? You okay? This is this is why this is how we do Bible study now. You go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, I was I, I, what I was thinking about me personally. You know, when you when you pray to God, when put okay. Okay. When you when you pray to God. 
me personally, when I pray to God, I'm praying for him for a response. Correct. So when I come to the house of worship or anywhere where I'm traveling, I'm always listening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to hear, you have to listen mm -hmm. in order to hear. This is true. So I'm coming in and I'm listening for God to speak through me, through a situation, through a person, That's it. through, you know, something, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and I'm listening to him because I trust him because I've been praying to him about this thing. You've experienced. You know, mm -hmm. And not looking so much on the pastor and this what true. he has going on because, man, we'll fail you. This is true. You know, and this it's true. just like I say, I ask God, God, why you put me, you know, in my household as uh -huh. a child, you know, but he knew what was best for me. Yes. You know, that, that, the, 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 uh, situation didn't overtake me but god took me through it this is true i, I like i like i like where you at sister bertha um in order to, she said this and it, it 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 messes with a person who tries to find the the perfect logic out of it but in order to she said in order to hear him you got to listen <laughs> it's simple in order to hear you got to listen and here's what she said i talked to him looking for a response well, if we talk to God, Minister Poole, looking for a response, then why do we think that God talks and don't want us to respond to him? Prayer, thank you, Sister Bertha, is a conversation. You and God. <laughs> you and God. If you pray to him and you're looking for something back, then when he answers you, he's looking for something back. It only makes sense, right? Why is it that many of us pray we want God to give it, but when we want God to give it, we don't recognize that when he gives it, he wants us to now give something back to him. Our praise and our worship is payment for the action of him being good to us when the truth should be, and this is not just to any one person in here, this is all of us listening, all of us have been in some way bad to God and did not deserve him being God to us. I didn't say good. <laughs> I said God. Yes, ma'am. You quick. know, Pastor, I'm, I'm thinking about in my earlier years, uh -huh. I wasted a whole lot of time because I was coming to church going through the motion. Yes. Yes. And I would say, I didn't get anything today. Yes. Yes. I didn't get nothing. Yes. Go home. I remember uh, when we first moved back to Chattanooga, and I went to my old church. I didn't get nothing. But yeah. I would leave there and go to the Golden Gallon, which was on the corner. Uh-huh. And I would buy me a beer. You one get can of beer. <laughs> one can of beer. <laughs> And I would drink it. And I did that about three three or four times. And then something hit me and said, you're not thirsty for this. You're seeking the word. And you're you thirsty were using for the word. it to As try a, and fill a void. It to fill a void. Mm -hmm. And then you have to have that personal one-on-one -on -one conversation with God. Uh-huh. And you have to be real. And let him deal with you. Yes. And and then I realized what you're looking for was already there. Uh huh. But you've got to give me something. I'm giving you, but you're you're cheating me. And all I he wanted that. from me was true praise uh -huh. and worship. And I was missing that point. And and I and I Too think back on how I wasted those years going through the motion all until I came to an understanding and hey all he wanted was a two lane road yeah here it is God's relationship with us should be both um make sure I'm using this word right um fluid there you go because I was gonna I was gonna make that so much more detail thank you fluid okay. it should flow to and from with no hiccups whatsoever. Why? Because if we don't distort our connection with God, 
it will be easy for us to praise him when the truth is being told. I'm not picking on no, no one about but I even notice that when we're worshiping, everybody worships different, but I notice that when we're worshiping, you have some that stand, they, they kind of close their eyes. They go off by themselves to God. You got some who sit, and you almost, it's almost as if the worship in the church is causing them to think about the stuff that they've gone through, they've done, where they are. And, and I, I've learned that worship looks different, but it still has a sound because what tends to happen is if I poke you, you, you don't just say, you say, ouch. I might, I might not be able to hear you, but it comes out. And what I'm getting to is if God moves you the way he, he does, and I know he moves, and you are who you really say you are in Christ, that should be a, a convulsion of your body almost to give back to God, whether it's praise, whether it's time, whether it's uh, study, money, whatever you have that you can give back to him, it's something that you ought to do as a response to God. I like where y'all had us at because it all talks about when you came into the knowledge, God dealing with you and you having that experience. Ezekiel's the same way. He had to go through the experience. I love this because I said this at first when we first walked into this lesson. Ezekiel was a preacher, but y'all know he's in the valley now. He's preaching in the valley. He's a preacher, but he's talking to dead folks. He's a preacher telling the truth, but in chapter number three, he was rejected and chapter, by live people. <laughs> he was rejected by people who, who was alive to hear it. Yeah. And in verse number, I mean, chapter number 37, he talking to bones who ain't even got ears. Yeah. And they respond because of the truth. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, can, can, I, can I talk to that chapter Go ahead. three Go ahead. real quick? He was, reject, he was rejected by live people. Can, can, how many of us have applied for a job and because we had too much skill set, we had too much experience, we were denied because we were overqualified. That's it. Okay, y'all y'all didn't experience that. That kind of hurt a little bit, didn't it? It kind of made you feel some type of way, didn't it? Well, can I just drop this off in your spirit that your rejection was the best thing that ever happened to you? Okay, y'all don't get it that way. Let me flip it around. Your rejection, your rejection is your protection. <laughs> it, it was it was what kept you. That no may have seemed like a no, but honestly, that no was next opportunity. But in that moment, all you felt was that pain and that hurt. What happened to Ezekiel was in that moment, he was rejected by the very people that he thought uh, that should have received it or needed to yep. receive it the most. Yep. And I don't know who it is, and I don't know how I got here, but watch this. Um, the best thing that could ever happen to you in your life is being rejected. Because I, 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 I had to learn personally that being accepted by everybody ain't good. Because what the rejection tells me, it tells me that there is something about me that people cannot deal with, not because it's bad for them to deal with, but because they don't know how to handle what it is that I am. You may not see uh, or recognize the fact uh, for people to reject you is them spiritually saying you are more valuable than I'm worthy to handle. Mm. You got more anointed on you than I'm able to, to withstand within myself. So therefore, I cannot, I dare not mess with what's, mm -hmm. what's this big. So it, 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 even to the people on Facebook, we're going to have an altar call moment here in these next 13.6 seconds. You are sitting here contemplating on the value of your life according to what you see from people. You're expecting people to value you. You're expecting people to, to applaud you. You're looking for the appreciation. When honestly, I, I promise you, if you will shift your sights up and stop looking for the people, but looking for the God that created you, 
that knows exactly how much you're worth, way far more and beyond what you even imagine. It's beyond that relationship. It's beyond that friendship. It is beyond that, that connection. It's beyond that church hurt. I promise you, when you start to let God deal with your value, because this is why Ezekiel's rejection only lasted for a chapter and not an entire book. Because he recognized, yeah, it hurt. I don't like it. But guess what? God got me now. And because I shifted my sight from people to God, I'm able to be carried. I was able to be talked to. My spirit was lifted. I was able to go into a dead place and not be tainted by it. I was able to survive a valley, experience a valley, and overcome it with victory. All because I did what? I got rejected. Rejection is necessary. If Ezekiel had have been accepted in chapter number three, he wouldn't have the confidence to preach to the dry bones in chapter number 37. And I know this to be true because in my 20 years of preaching, every round gets a little higher. <laughs> I realize that, that the rejections of this year really are just propelling me and motivating me to be greater next year. That's it. Um, this time, next year, I won't be the same way. Because, Sister Mayor, I would have sat down enough to recognize I'm not what, and obviously I'm not what I think I am because everybody can accept me. And, well, maybe I'm not, it's not that it's needed for everybody to accept me. Maybe I need to learn that rejection is necessary in every aspect of my life. For if I'm not rejected, I become complacent. And when you become complacent, stagnation sets in. Mm -hmm. And it's some sister Bertha wrong with the spirit of stagnation in the church now because the spirit of stagnation has allowed us to believe that church is just what it is now. It, God's message is true, but you're just going to get it how you get it now. Mm -hmm. I still believe the Bible it's true. I still believe to forsake not the assembling of thyselves together. I still believe that while COVID is real dangerous and will kill you, so will sin and God if you don't uh, live right. <laughs> I'm just being honest. That's so I'm at a place where I operate now understanding the assignment and understanding that even if I'm rejected, it's really God moving in my, in my project, like you said, in my protection. For if I'm accepted by everybody, the truth would be that some of those folks that accept me ain't telling the truth about me. If everybody that accepts me ain't telling the truth about me, then you don't love me for real. Which means that if you reject me, you saved me. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead. You ask the question who you talk to. I talk to him. I don't know who you talking to, but I talk to him. Talk the, to the relationship uh -huh. that you're still trying to go after, if God didn't tell you uh, to, to, see, uh, to seek it and to uh, search for it, then you need to leave it alone. Yeah. It's making you sick because you keep going after it, and you keep going after something that God has tried to set up rejection in. So that it can protect you out of. Y'all ain't hearing me. So maybe it's the marriage that you've been trying to fix. Maybe the marriage that's been so good, or so bad, uh, it's getting even worse. And you're trying, oh God, it just means that we need to pray more. We need to go to the preacher. We need Work, to go sir. to the therapist. No, the truth is God is trying to set up rejection so that the two people in the marriage will understand that y'all should have never got here in the first place. I'm just trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody that maybe the church you've joined, the reason why you can't serve there, the reason why you can't find love there, the reason why you can't seem to hear God there, it's possibly because instead of going there, God was telling you to go somewhere else, and instead of hearing his word, you did what you wanted to do. 
And because you did what you wanted to do, you found yourself searching and chasing something where he was trying to set up rejection to save you from. And you said it, Mother Morris, if you had known so many years ago, you wouldn't have wasted so much of your time. Well, I can say the same thing, and I'm only 34 years old. Had I known at four years old, five, six, seven to 12 and 13, that I was, I was just going through the motions because mama said you're going to get up and go to Sunday school, because mama said you're going to be in church. When I fell asleep, she popped me and said, you're going to wake up and listen to the word of God. Yeah. I knew Jesus because I was made to go to church. I knew Jesus because I was drugged to go to church, but I got to know Jesus. Y'all hear me? I knew Jesus because mama told me about him. Daddy told me about him. But I got to know Jesus because I experienced some stuff with Jesus. And somewhere between 12 and about 17 years old, I got to know God in a very, very real way. Mother Moore, it was the type of God that would save you out of your trouble when you knew that the trouble you was in should have even landed you in jail or dead. Y'all ain't hearing me. You, 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 you realize you know God since the birth at the time where you, you de dealt with an abusive marriage, an abusive relationship. You dealt with violence. You dealt with living in a way that you knew uh, was not pleasing to God. But God, like you said, I thank you, Sister Bertha. You got me here. You, he, he, didn't, he didn't allow the problem to overcome you. He didn't allow the valley to overtake Ezekiel. He didn't allow uh, the rejection to make Ezekiel stop what he was doing. He allowed the rejection to remind Ezekiel, Ezekiel, you're carrying my message. And if you're going to carry my message, then I'm going to undergird and support you wherever you go. And when you speak, you're going, your face is going to be just as hard as theirs. And when you talk, it, it, even if they don't hear you, you're going to say what you got to say and you're going to move on. And here's what we got to understand about our valley. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When we are in our valley and when things may seem dead, God gives us the power. Mm -hmm. I'm glad Sister Bertha brought me to this, and I, I don't know why I waited so long to say this, but she said this, I don't depend on the preacher. Man will fail you. Huh. A lot of times, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, we need the preacher to help us get out of our problem when the truth is we need to be praying that the preacher doesn't have problems himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Call on the elders. Yeah, call on the elders, but before you call on them, you better pray for them. <laughs> you better pray for the elders before you call them because if you call them and they just as messed up and jacked up as you are, when they come to try to deal with your problem, they ain't going to do nothing but jack it up even more because their mind's not there. If Ezekiel had have been dwelling on the rejection, he wouldn't have been able to go out into that valley and to speak and to even tell God, you know, I'm just going to open up my mouth and you talk. That's really what Ezekiel said. God, you know. Why do you know? Because only the only way bones are going to get life is that you speak to them. I ain't got no power, Mr. Tony. I ain't got no power, Mr. Pullen. Matter of fact, I've tried to speak to dead bones before and caused them to live on my own accord. Thank you, sister. Come on Carl. down that street, sir. <laughs> Come on down that street because because can, can I tell you? Because many of us have. We, we've tried to. We've tried to take what God has told us put it in our own words and make it sound real good. Mm. Didn't realize that God's words sounded good enough. We tried to get in pulpits, and not just we. I'm talking about we as a collective group of preachers who have tried to maneuver through Sunday mornings carrying their own will, their own word. <laughs> My God. This ain't just for y'all. Um. And they found out when they got out into that valley that it wasn't that the folks wasn't listening. It was that the word of God wasn't what they were speaking. And when you can give six to seven pages of nothingness mm -hmm. and not give Jesus, it's a wonder why folk won't say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Because the truth ain't being Revealed is not being spoken, it's not being talked about. And if Ezekiel went out into this valley and did not carry the message of God, his message would have been of none effect. I mean, let me just say, going out to a valley of dry bones, I'd have been to the hospital before, Minister Pullen, and I walked past a room and said, Lord, if it be your will, just let them live. That wasn't God's will. 
that wasn't what God wanted. That was what I wanted to happen. Mm-hmm. That was what I needed to see at, for my faith. But it wasn't the message and the truth of what God wanted to do. I had to accept that sometime what I want is not the truth of what God needs me to say. I get lost in the, it was me. Mm-hmm. It was me. I, I did that. It, I was I didn't labor long enough in what God wanted me. I didn't follow what God needed me. And if Ezekiel had gone out there and really just kind of did on his own, like walked around the valley, walked through the valley, got out in the center of the valley and said, Valley, hear God's word. Wouldn't nothing happen. Think about what Ezekiel said. Ezekiel said, I prophesied as God commanded me to. Yeah. I said yeah. what God told me to say. I didn't deviate from it. I didn't add anything to it. I didn't take anything from it. I said, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of God. (laughs) And you will notice, too, that when you're you're speaking in yourself Uh versus when you're speaking in God, the silence is different. I love it. I love it. The silence is different. When you're speaking in yourself, that silence is awkward. I love it. And you know it's awkward. And you know it's awkward. So you got to kind of keep talking, trying to trying to work through it real fast and try to get it around. But when when you're speaking through God, it's peaceful. And you ain't got to labor right there. You have peace in your spirit with it, and you can keep going. You ain't got to ask for the amen. Because, you know, if you say amen, you ain't listening. So it ain't no amen needed right there. And you, and you can ride that wave on in through peace because then you know that seeds are being planted. I love that type of silence. That's why I, I, I don't even worry no more. When I know I'm telling the truth, when I know the truth is being preached and the, the, the house is real silent, I really feel like, I'm going back to the birth again, I really feel like you're listening so that you can hear God. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay when you are not, hey, man, preacher, go ahead. No, it's okay because a lot of times when you're so in the fanfare of cheering them on, you can't hear what's being said clearly. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're saying amen when the preacher's saying the meat of the truth, you didn't hear him say it. You didn't hear him say it. And if I could teach us something real quickly, amen isn't supposed to be a moment of um, cheering uh, to motivate him to go on. A man is an indication that I've heard it and I agree. I agree. A man. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you know, and, and that, that's it. it. It literally is, I agree. Um, you're telling the truth. Uh, I believe it. And now, how do you believe what I'm saying if you ain't heard, if you ain't heard what I, what I say? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Sometimes you can really be preaching. Uh-huh. And you and the people are sitting there intense and they're listening and reflecting on what you said. Uh-huh. But then you kill it. Oh, ain't nobody listening to me. Let let me talk to the wall. Yeah. I've, that 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 right there. Yeah. You you've turned off the people you're supposed to be giving the message to. They're listening, but then you put self back in the wake because to me, self showed up. Mm-hmm. And it it really, you you made a point and the people are reflecting on it, but then you just stepped on it. I get what you're saying. Let me help us out, uh, navigate that through that just a little bit more. Preaching is an art. Preaching is an art. It's a gift, one that must be cultivated. The person who's using the gift must use the gift as God gives it through the way they can, they can what's the name? Now, I do agree with what you're saying, that sometimes you can kill the message by um, saying s- certain things like that, but let me put the truth where the truth needs to be. Sometimes it ain't just folk recollecting. Sometimes folk just don't want to agree to the truth. And when the preacher says, amen, lights, it's almost like the, uh, Jesus saying to the disciple when the disciple said, tell them to hook. Get them away. Jesus said, if I tell them to hush, the rocks are going to cry out. At this point, 
the preacher is really trying to prove that truth is being spoken. Y'all ain't hearing it. So since y'all ain't listening, let me talk to something that's going to listen because it ain't got no other reason but to be designed to do so. So let me let me tell you out. Walls don't have ears just like bones don't. But I guarantee you these walls could talk. They tell every secret that's been told, everything that's been said. Why would walls be able to say that? Because the walls are sponges. These walls have taken in everything that's been said, even the truth of the gospel. And even if the preacher says, now, the thing about the preacher saying that is no which spirit the preacher is coming in. If the preacher stands up, you already already know when he begins to go into his message where he is. You you can you can I mean, let me just go ahead and, and be transparent about this. I've gone and listened to some preachers where I literally had to text myself, self, hmm, why are you here? Because the truth of it, they got up with an arrogant air. Their head was so far up in the clouds, and Mary, when they started talking. You could just tell they were full of themselves. So I can understand that somebody who says, y'all ain't hearing me, amen, like that, are, that, that does come that are full of themselves, yeah, they, they are walking in themselves at that time. But there's a mind that I want us to flip to that it's still a fact that if you ain't listening, something is. So now, do I keep that fact to myself? Or do I tell you the truth? Somebody in here ain't listening. A man, air condition, it just came on. You understand what I'm saying, though? And, and the reality is really this. It's not to me, it's not to bombard the person that's not listening, but it literally is my understanding that things make noise. And I don't know if y'all hear it, but the AC makes some noise when it comes on. The lights make a noise when they flicker. The speakers make a noise when they got frequency crossing. So sometimes you can tell what the person says by the spirit the person come in. So I would say just, just to help us because I ain't going to be, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm, I'm one of those preachers. And I'll be honest, I'm one of those preachers. If I feel like I know, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, if I know I'm walking heavy, and a preacher knows when he's walking. A preacher knows when that spirit is on him, and he cannot shake it. If he's walking heavy, if I'm walking heavy, and I know that after I come out of that heaviness, ain't nobody said amen. All right, then, speaker. Amen, speaker. Because somebody has to, to respond to the heaven. Now, the truth of it is two things. It's twofold. The heaviness sometimes can be too heavy for a person to respond because it works on them too badly. And sometimes the word can work on you so heavy in the church till silence is the best thing for you to do. Because if you, if you, if you say something or you, you make us, you'll start to tell on yourself. <laughs> you, you start to tell the stuff you're going through. You start to, Lord, gee, you brought me through it. And some stuff ain't for you to publicly Go down that list. <laughs> if you can't say amen, say ouch. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. That's why I wanted to help us. You weren't wrong. I didn't want anybody to listen to us online. She's not wrong. She's perfectly correct in those that come. Mr. Pullett, I mean, Tony just alluded to it. You got folks who will talk, get to a place where they know that ain't God. They got to figure out, Lord, I, I need you now because... I done got out here in deep water. I'm talking about something. Because even now, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to make sense of it. So now I got to get. So no, Sister Mary, Mother Mary, you were not wrong. There are some, and this comes to the people, the, the sheep, the people who hear. You got to try the spirit by, by the spirit. spirit. That's why you always got to check, um, evaluate self first and be like, okay, Make sure I'm in the right spirit. And then you ask God, like Sister Bertha said, God, speak to me. Now, here's the truth. God speaks, and if you listen, you're here. If you ask God to speak and he doesn't speak, there's two things that could be wrong. The preacher is not coming in the spirit of God, 
or you have some things that you have to clear up before God will reveal to you what it is you're praying for. Mm -hmm. Let me help y'all out real quickly. God says to bring all your cares to the altar, correct? But he also said that if you got a problem with your brother, you leave your problem at that altar. Go fix your problem. Then you come back and you talk to me about your issue. Why? Because if you can't even go fix your problem with your brother, how dare you come ask me to fix your problem with you? Y'all hear me? I'm, I'm just trying to hear. I'm just trying to. Sister, Sister, Mary, Sister Mary brought us to a, no, I, I'm, I know I'm a bit off the list, but, but Sister Mary brought us to a very important part of both preacher and congregant. It is a teamwork that mm. the word gets out. If I preach it, or if anybody preach it and it's not heard, not the preacher's fault, it's the ear. But if the ears come ready to hear and the preacher gets up in the wrong spirit, <laughs> it ain't the ear's fault, it's, it's the, preacher. the preacher. It ain't the mouth of God that's wrong at any time. There's two things often that will go wrong with the human body that will make you misunderstand something, your hearing and your talking. <laughs> it, it always... If you, if you heard it wrong, you'll repeat it wrong. Mm -hmm. When you repeat it wrong, you can have the right intention on not spreading this seeds of discord, but you're repeating In hearing or, or you're repeating what you heard wrong mm -hmm. and not getting clarity with the problem. Thank you for bringing me back to the lesson, Holy Spirit. If the bones yep. did not hear clearly what he's would have never made no noise. The noise, thank you, is an indication that both the bones and the mouth, the ear and the mouth, are on one accord. Folks are coming to hear because they're not coming to hear the man, they're coming to hear God. But then man speaks God because the man realizes they're not coming to hear me. They're, they're coming to hear God. Go ahead, and then I need to get uh, uh, rolling because he been over. I really been feeling like he been having a lot to say, but he just been letting us say it. I and know, then right? He don't. He, <laughs> he he don't say. Well, I got something right here. He he just. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we letting him close this thing out tonight. He, 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 he thought he was getting away with something. So so real quick. That's why it was important. Uh uh. Thank you, by the way, Mother Moore. Thank you. That, that's why it was, that important was important for God to tell Ezekiel exactly correct what, what to, to say. say. Yep, yep. Because uh, uh, just like Pastor said, if he had went in error, the bones would have made a noise, <laughs> but the noise, but the been, noise yeah. wouldn't have been according to what God Come wanted. On. Come on. And everything yep. that happens it has to bring glory back to God. Oh, and God right. being jealous, therefore he wants to make sure that the glory that he's going to get is right. All noise ain't good noise. That's what I just heard. All noise ain't good noise. That's why the Bible says make a joyful noise. I'm going to throw my computer. No, I paid too much for it. Never mind. Make a joyful noise unto who? The Lord. All ye lands. It's got it's to have a, it, it got to be a, a, appealing to the ear of God. I'm going to tell y'all. It's got to be appealing to his ear. I'm going to tell y'all what happened. Minister Tony was supposed to preach this coming up Sunday, but he's not going to be here, so he's trying to get his sermon in now. Amen, lights. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just need to help them out on that. <laughs> and, and 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 so so honestly, no, seriously, that that's exactly that that was why. Yeah, 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 that's true. That that's why it was so important. Prophesied as he commanded. Yeah. And then on top of that, what we have to recognize is mm -hmm. is that Ezekiel, though he's a prophet, mm -hmm. though he's a preacher, though he is being used by God. Guess what? He's still human. And, and there still is still yeah. a slight bit, tinge, twinge, a flesh. twinkle mm -hmm. of rejection. Yeah. Because guess what? God done brought me to this place. Yep. What if they don't respond? Yep. Now, I got to relive chapter three all over again. Yep. Yep. I got to go back through that again. This time, I don't think I'm going to make it through because now I'm in a dead place. I might as well die. Come on, man. Prophesy to who? Myself? <laughs> that's, that's God, it, you know it. Yeah. Because right now, I'd have been rejected. Yeah. 
It hurts. I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm bitter. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm yeah. disgruntled. Yeah. Because they ain't been hearing me. Because they didn't want to listen to me. And they was alive. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I Listen, we got to go. I got to go, but thank you. We right here. <laughs> I keep remembering any time God tells his prophet to speak and his prophet is rejected, I'm often reminded about Moses. Mm -hmm. When God told Moses, said, you tell them, you instruct them, you lead them. And Moses got to look, ah, God, they won't listen to me. God said, no, it's not you they won't listen to. It's me. So Ezekiel brings us to a point of, of this. All of us in here have been commissioned to go. Preach whether you're in the valley or whether you're on the mountain. Whether you're talking to folk that are alive that will reject you, whether you're talking to dead bone, bones in the valley that's going to hear you and respond. He says to preach, and this is what he also says. Not only do you preach, but you recognize that while they will reject you, it is not you that they are rejecting. They may reject you as the vessel, but they're rejecting me as the voice. They may reject you as the pitcher, they're rejecting me as the water. They may reject you as the barrel but they're rejecting me as the goods that are inside. Don't worry about your rejection. What you really need to be worried about is when they reject me. Woe unto them that rejects me. So, no, I love this. There was a little bit of flesh in him because in verse, I mean, chapter number three, he felt some type of way because folk didn't hear him. In verse of chapter number 37, though, he's preaching whether or not they hear him or not. He's literally in a valley of dead bones and tells God, God, you know whether or not they can hear me. So what did God tell him? Say this. Thank you, Mr. T Say this. And how did he say it? Just like he was told to say it. It may hurt. It's the truth. I have a new saying now. It's tight, but it's right. It may cut you, and so the word should. The Bible said it's like a two-edged sword. Cuts you going in, cuts you coming out. If it don't cut you and convict you to change, then I can honestly tell you it ain't the word you're reading because the word will change it. Mr. Tony, and then listen, here's what I need you to do. <laughs> Take the take take your time. Work, sir. Walk this thing. And I need you to say whatever's on your heart. And when you're done, Mr. Tony gonna pray us out of here, man. I'm gonna cut my mic off and I'm gonna shut up. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna back up for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> when I'm gonna say it like this. When, when I was a child, and I won't say in my uh, teenage years, my parents often would make the comment that I kept the streets warm. Okay. Good dad here. <laughs> Y'all can note that as true. He, he, he can testify <laughs> that. Those are his words. You keep the street warm. That car never gets a chance to cool off. But my mom would always come to me and tell me, baby, you need to give God some of your time. Every morning, God spoke to me, get up, put your shoes on, get out the house, go to school, look left, look right, don't step out in front of that car. My, my immaturity of the situation thought it was me. The immaturity of my situation thought it was that it was me that said, oh, I need to look right, oh, I need to look left. My, maturity, my immaturity thought it was me that was getting me through the day. But it was God that was getting me through the day. Weeks would go by, months would go by. My mom would come back to me again. Baby, you need to give God some of your time. What I didn't understand was that what she was telling me was that God was speaking to me, 
and I needed to respond. I didn't catch that. And as pastor was talking, God brought it back to me. Hey, remember all those times your mom used to say, need to give me some time? The next thing is that when we are going to give God some time, we got to clear the clutter out of the way. We can't hear him because of all the garbage we keep piling up in, in, in front of him. And the junk that we pile up in front of him is the stuff we watch on TV, the stuff we listen to, the people we listen to, the people we talk to, and the stuff we deal with. And not and all those distractions. We put all that in front of him, and he's still saying he's still saying the exact same thing. I love you. Why don't you come into my house and listen to what I gotta say for the Sunday? And he don't yell. He he keeps that nice, calm, calm voice. But we pile all this stuff in front of him, we can't hear him. And Sister Mary, you said that sometimes you, you would come into the house of the Lord and you'd be like, I didn't get nothing out of it. I didn't get nothing out of it. I've been there. But the reason why I didn't get nothing out of it because I didn't have my ear open. I was coming in. I'm here at church. All right, I'm doing what I'm supposed to. You're here in church. I'm, I'm here in church. Yeah. I'm doing All right, Pastor. You, that's, that's good work, Pastor. That's good work, Pastor. Pastor, you're you preaching awful, awful long. I got somebody I got to be now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm putting something in front of God instead of, instead of coming in to sit down and listen and hear what God's got to say for me. I know there's been several times as I've gotten a little bit more mature. I'm not not there yet. I'm still working on it. I've come in feeling broke, busted. I can't go no further. And though I want to give something, I don't have nothing to give. But I'm here because I want to hear what the Lord's got to say. He ain't never let me down. And I'm going to say that again. He ain't never let me down. I've come in and just been like, I don't have nothing else to give. The piano starts playing. The deacon starts singing. And something changes. The, that whatever was, was trying to kill me has got to leave. It, it can't stay. It's not, it's not able to stay because it doesn't have the same power that God does. So I've said it once before, this is a hospital. The world is trying to kill us. It's trying to make us sick, but we got to come in here to get that injection of what's right so that we can live. Amen. He did. He, he, he had something on him so and him hard, and he had to get it off. It, I, it, it was real heavy because he was shaking with it. I saw, I saw it saw the that. whole time. I was like, he, he, something happened. I was going to call for Usher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call for us. Look. Oh, but listen, everything he said was literally true, right on time, and it literally epitomizes Ezekiel. You you somebody told Ezekiel to spend time with God. If Ezekiel had never spent that time in chapter three to get rejected, you said clutter, depression, TV, all this stuff, this crap. It's clutter. And until we can come in, uh, the, the older saint would say, an empty picture before the full fountain. Um, filthy rags before our, our true and sovereign God. When we can come knowing that we're nothing and empty, God, I love what he tells Ezekiel, and we're going. Ezekiel tells us, I'm sorry, he carries us out. He doesn't allow us to touch the dead bone, but he allows for us, us to speak to them. What does that say? I thank you, Holy Spirit, as we leave. Some folks we won't be able to touch. Facebook, so many of us watching, we won't be able to touch them. But if we tell them what God says, those dry bones will heal the word of God. Minister Paul, and I thank you for hearing the word of God. <laughs> And your mama and your daddy, <laughs> I think uh, you as well. I've, I've been able to, to spend time with you enough to know that you've heard somebody. Somebody told you to hear God's word. Somebody told you to spend time. I don't know if y'all were related to the same folk I was related to, but obviously so because they told me the same thing. And all you're doing, the Bible says, understanding. If you don't understand what you're talking about, you can't talk about what you understand. 
And if you can't understand it to talk about it, you won't be able to lead nobody else to Christ. Our greatest goal and greatest job is while God has fixed us up and while we've had experienced things with God enough for God to repair us, God only has repaired us that we may be a vessel and a voice to talk to somebody else. Sheep begot sheep. The only way others will come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ is if those who already know him will carry him to them the way they know him. Sister Mary, you can't know him the way I know him. We've experienced God in two separate places in our life, but we can come to worship together every week because we know the God that has brought you through your many years and the God who's only brought mine through my 34. The same God, we worship him together because we have two separate experiences of him being just as great and as good as he's always been. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. We thank y'all. We give, we give praise to God for all of y'all that have um, participated, has chimed in, those who have did it online. I can tell y'all tonight that Sister Tiffany, uh, she said that she can't see in both rainy and dark times. <laughs> She said you're going to have to toss her one or the other. But given her both of them, um, she told she, she did text the pastor and told her, she said, Pastor, you know, I need a little uh, optical assistance. So I'm setting it up um, so that this won't be an excuse uh, in the future. But she did. She, she wanted me to know she wanted to be here. She could not be here because she didn't want to uh, chance her safety. And we understand that. Uh, but she has been chiming in online, and we thank God for her. We thank God for um uh, not a new member, but one who has come back home, uh, Sister Bertha Knuckles. Did I get that right? I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was going to get used to that, but I got it. Um, we thank God for um, for her, um, for, for, for listening to God, coming back, and, and just finding her place, trying to figure out where she can serve. And we know once she finds it, she's going to do it because she – she be keeping her pastor on it. She she prays for her pastor. I promise y'all she do. She prays for and she she don't mind. She'll write me uh, if 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 some she didn't understand. I love when you can when you can approach the man of God with respect of the man of God and and try to converse to understand where you are and where that's that's how you grow relationship and that's how God truly draws you back and and directs you because you don't see the man as God. You see the man as a man of God. And when you see him, oh, yeah, and sister, so yeah, Mother Morley right out of the list. She didn't came over here before us, uh, bro, uh, bro, <laughs> Mr. Rowland. Hey, uh, so this, this scripture right here, when it said this, what did it mean? Okay, now that we got that understanding, this one right here, <laughs> I love it. But when you, can't, when you can do that, that's, let, that's walking in Christ. You're growing in Christ. And, and growth needs to be evident. If it's not evident, you don't give the preacher enough to know that he's doing right or that he needs to do more. And, and, and you, this, this, this is Christianity and growing in faith should be something that you often toss and catch, toss and catch. If I toss it and the person don't catch it, then either I'm throwing it too hard, too high, or, you know, they have feeding area. So that's, that's where we are now at Antioch. And I, I know I ain't on listen no more, and I'm perfectly talking to my folks now. I'm, we just having a conversation now. And so I'm going to let y'all go. Uh, we thank God for each and every last one of y'all. We thank God for, let me see if I can do this. Sister Fonville from North Carolina, thank God for you. Sister Carter from right here in Chattanooga, we thank God for you. Sister Fennell, I don't know where you're from. I would, I would assume you're from here. Chattanooga? Okay. All right. All right. So you're online. Hey, guess what? I'd love to see your face one day. I promise you. And if I've seen your face and I just didn't know you as for nail, please charge it to my head and not my heart, please. Thank you. Um, Sister Adams from right here in Chattanooga. Sister Watson, one of our own right here in Chattanooga. Brother Watkins right here in Chattanooga. Sister Leland, I don't know if she's still on. I don't know her, Danielle Leland, uh, but God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Sister Burke, uh, Mother Burke, right here at Antioch. Uh, God bless you. <laughs> Minister Pullen, <laughs> from right here beside me. <laughs> Sister Stewart, I forget where you're from. I think she's from Ohio, right? 
the owner's from Ohio. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, got you. So, Stuart, God bless you. Thank you all. I'm just trying to get, get to know. And then Minister Tony decides he wants to get on last and say, Hey, hey Pastor. Pastor. How you doing, Mr. Tony? I'm doing well. How you doing, sir? <laughs> I Hello, love y'all. Listen, we finna go. We finna go. Now that we've had God, listen, Antioch is a church full of love, laughter, and we 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 serve God, but we do it in the in the way we know that we have to. We know how to reach people where they are. And that's where we are right now in God. So we thank each and every last one of you for allowing us to be ourselves. Thanks to Yvette for having our kids. We thank them that even though we still got our rooms back a little messed up, that she's finding room somewhere uh, to teach our kids back there. We thank God for each and every last one of you. Um, she just said, Sister Finesse, I grew up in Antioch. All right, then, if you grew up in Antioch, I, I need you to keep growing in Antioch. And and obviously, you've been online for some time now. So, Sister Finesse, this is my personal invitation to you. Your pastor says, if you would have me, I would love to have you in this church so that you can be among the family and you can know how Antioch is now, how we, how we have grown more in love and more in unity. And so we, we want you to come. Come on. Sister Russell, somebody just joined on. Sister Priscilla Russell, God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Everybody, even if you watch this later, thank you for joining us. God bless you. We have a saying here at Antioch. Y'all going to say it with me? We love you. There's nothing, nothing you can, can do, do about it. it. And if you want to do something about it, you'd have to take that up with the Lord because we're going to love you anyway. God bless you. Y'all get, y'all get good. Ooh, that concert sound nice. Go ahead and pray. I, all right. All right. Let us pray. Uh, even quickly, uh, yes. remember, follow us on YouTube uh, Sunday mornings at 915, Sunday school, 11 o'clock morning worship. Please don't forget you can give. Three ways to give. Cash app, give the five. And in person, amen. Uh, all prayer requests, just put them in the comments. I'm just going to do a, 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 a umbrella effect and lotty dotty everybody, all right? Uh, let us pray. Uh, God, we thank you. God, we love you. God, we ask that uh, you will bless this time that you have given, Father. We ask, God, that those that are here, God, be blessed. God, those that are even online, God, we're blessed. And, God, we ask that we uh, come to the understanding and the knowledge that our rejection is your protection for our lives. And, God, that no matter what comes up against us, Father, that is you that have the last say. And if we would continue to look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all our help comes from you, God, we will be able, just like Ezekiel, to go around that valley untainted, unbothered, and be able to speak life back into dead situations. God, we ask that you continue to keep us. God, we ask that you continue to uh, shape, rule, and abide in our lives, Father. Uh, bless this pastor of this great church, Father. Continue to give him what it is that you will have for him to know, God. Continue to lead, God, and direct uh, this church as a collective. Uh, God, bless us uh, as we go in our many destinations and directions. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. All the saved folks said amen. 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 Man, pan.